This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Hey, good morning, Rabbi Isai. Pashas Yisrael. Pirka the Agra. Pirka the Agra. Pirka the Agra. Pirka the Agra. Agra the Pirka, thank you. Agra the Pirka. Agra the Pirka. Agra the Pirka. Pashas Yisrael. So in uh, Zmiros and Shabbos, um, one of the well-known Zmiros is... Um, Yom Shabbos and Ein Lishkoyach. Mm-hmm. Yom Shabbos and Ein Lishkoyach is written by Rabbi Yehuda Halevi. Rabbi Yehuda Halevi was the uh, author of uh, Sefer Kuzari. Sorry. And he is one of the most famous Paitonim of all time. He was born in Toledo in the year 1075. And uh, he's well known for his uh, passionate love for Eretz Yisrael. And uh, if you look in the Kinnis, right, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi wrote, Kinnah Halot Tzion Halot Sishali. And legend has it as he's finally making his way to Eretz Yisrael, to Yushalayim. So he kneels down at the gates of Yushalayim. He's trampled by uh, Arab horsemen. So in, the, in, the, um, in his Zimra that he wrote... And then what happened? Yom Shab- when he fell, when he no, they, they, that's how he uh, was killed, Nabach. Uh-huh. So in his uh, Zemer, he writes... Also the Ramban. <clears throat> Ramban. Ramban different the Ramban. different stories about the Ramban. But he writes the following... In Yom Shabbos and Yom Lishkach, he says like this: Diber bekadshay b'har hamar. Yom Hashvi zacha b'shamer. The Hashem spoke in His holiness on Har Hamar, and what did He say? Yom Hashvi zacha b'shamer. Question is, what does that mean? Hashem spoke b'har hamar. Let me speak b'har hamar. What's har hamar? Har hamar is har hamaria. Har hamaria, right? Lama ma ma ma, right? You know the song? <laughs> Lama nikra maria, al shem hamar hatov sheyash nasham, right? The Gemara in Tain, actually that's a medrash. The Gemara in Mesech the Tain is Tazayin and Aleph says, why is it called maria? Either because shemisham hayral yatzal Yisrael shenamar ki mitziyayin teitzei sayra, or misham yatzal maira la'ivdei kechavim. Right, that fear went out to the Goyim from har maria. But in any event, har maria is not... The place that Hashem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael. Hashem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael on Har Sinai, not on Har Hamaria. So, what's, what does this line mean? Diber Bekadshai Bahar Hamaria? No. She should say, Diber Bekadshai Bahar Sinai. I mean, it's a nice, it fits, it rhymes. Har Sinai. told us that the Amoria was moving. Okay. We once spoke about that, Parshas Bahalaisha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, Har Sinai doesn't rhyme with the word Shamar. October also. But, you know. Besides rhyming, it also has to be true. So, it should say, Diver B'Kashar B'Harsin, Ayam Ashir Zahav Shem. Okay. So we have, right before Matan Torah, so it says, Vayishma Yisroi Chosei Moshe Kain Lidyon, right? Yisroi heard. And then after the whole episode that Yisroi comes, the Pasuk says, in Parak Yerches, Pasuk Yer Gimel, Vayihimi Macharas, it was the next day, Vayish of Moshe Lishbet Ha'am, Moshe sat to judge the nation, Vayam Oit Ha'am Ha'amoshe, and the nation stood by Moshe and Abayka at Ara from morning till evening. So the question is, the next day after what? After what? Now, this is written in the Chumash before the Asar Sadrbas. It's written before the giving of the Torah. Now, it's impossible to say that uh, it's impossible to say that Moshe Ben was judging the people before the Torah was given. What was he judging them with? Without a Torah, you can't judge. So you're forced to say that Vahimi Machras is after the giving of the Torah. So at, just to read the Psukim, you have to say Ein Muktim Amuchah B'Torah. Because Vahimi Machras has to be after the Torah was given, otherwise Moshe can't be judging them. So the first thing we have to understand is, as a Hakdama Tamatan Torah, the Torah writes a parsha that's out of order. It's an interesting thing, right? We know, in Muktam Mukhab Torah. But this is almost the Hakdama to Matan Torah. The Hakdama is a story that didn't take place yet. It's interesting. It means that Yitro came before Matan Torah. No, now there's a Machlaikis whether Yitro came before Matan Torah or after Matan Torah. Yeah. Says Rashi, even if he came before Matan Torah, the next Indian, Vahimi Machras, had to happen after Matan Torah. So you, you can have a machlekes when Yisrael came, but there's no machlekes what Vayihimi Machras was, because Moshe Rabbeinu could not judge Kala Yisrael before the Torah was given. So the question is, what does it mean Vayihimi Machras was the next day? The next day after what? Says Rashi, look at number three, Vayihimi Machras. Matzah Yom HaKippurim Hayu, it was the day after Yom Kippur. Kach Shaninu Umahumi Machras, what does it mean the next day? Lemachras 
Ridatai Minahar, the day after he came down from the mountain. Right, we know Moshe Rabbeinu came down from the mountain when on Yom Kippur. So the, ne- the, de- the next day, Yer Aleph, Tishrei, Moshe Rabbeinu is already judging the people. Says Rashi. You have to say, you have to say this was the day after Yom Kippur. Why? Maybe it's the day after the giving of the Torah? No. Because after the Torah was given on uh, Vav Sivan, Moshe Rabbeinu yeah, was too up. busy to sit and judge the people. Right? He went up Vav Sivan, he came down... Shabbat Shabbat he broke the Luchas, he went up another time 40 days, he went up another time 40 days, so from the day the Torah was given on Vav Sivan, 40 days, 40 days, 40 days, Moshe Rabbeinu had no time to sit and judge the people. So you have to say, You have to say that when it says, it was the day after Yom Kippur, why? You can't say, before Matan Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu says, I'm going to teach the people the laws. What laws? I mean, what, what he learned in Mara? I mean, how long could he spend on that? But I has to be the whole Torah. From the time the Torah was given until Yom Kippur, Lo Yashav Moshe Lishbet Asam, Moshe had no opportunity to sit and judge the people. Shaharei B'Yudzayin B'Tamaz Yarad, he comes down the 17th of Tamaz. B'Shiber Asaluchais, he breaks the Luchais. Ulamachar Allah B'Hashkama. And the next day, Moshe Abinu goes up, Shmonim Yom. Yeah. Early in the morning. He stays there 80 days, right? Two times he goes. goes up 40 days on, on Yerches Tamos. He comes down. Erev Rosh Chodesh Elul. He comes up again. Rosh Chodesh Elul. He comes back down. Yom Kippur. The yard beyond my Kippur. Says Rashi. Ein parsha zu ksuva keseder. This parsha is out of order. Shalai nemer vahimi machras. These words, the Himi Rachas, did not take place Ad Shana Shnia till the second year, right? The Torah was given in year one in Nisan Iyan Siva, Nisan Iyar Sivan, right? In the third month. Third month. But then, this is the day after Yom Kippur. This is in year what? In year two. Right? Shalai Nemra Vahim Rachas Ad Shana Shnia. Even according to the opinion, even if you want to say that the beginning of the parasha is before the giving of the Torah, but from Shani and on, that happened after the giving of the Torah. Why, why Rashi has to say Shana Shniya? He should have said after Yom Kippur, the first Yom Kippur that they had. Yeah, but it just means Shana Shniya. In other words, Shana Shniya, it means, could be Matan Torah Shana Shniya. Shana Shniya means Matan Torah was in Shana Aleph, and then Tishrei begins yeah, why is Shana, Shana Shniya. Shniya? Means understood it's the next year, it's obvious. Yeah. Rashi just means to say it didn't happen until, uh, until after the giving of the Torah. Why Rashi stresses Shana Shniya? Where was he? He had tickets for the show. <laughs> Where was he for Rosh Hashanah? He went up. He went up. But the Torah is actually saying against me. It's look, the Torah says, Look at the Torah. The word Mimachras, the Gematria Lemacha Yom Kippurim. The, 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 the numerical value, Mimachras, right? What is that? 688 is the same Gematria as Lemacha Yom Kippurim. Okay. How many times did he go up? Three times. He went up three 40 day periods. Starting Bab Sivan. He comes down Yudzayin Tamaz. He breaks the Luchas. He goes up again the next day. Yerches. He comes down Erev Rosh Chodesh. Elul. Why? Because Hashem said, take two. And then when he came down, Hashem said, okay, we'll give you another, a third chance. We'll give you a chance. Yeah. The second time was for one? Hashem said, come up. Let's, you know, see you. Moshe Reino Davin, 40 days to get the Torah again. So Hashem, after Moshe Davin, 40 days again, Hashem said, okay, come up a third time. Yeah. Okay. Now it's very interesting. When Yisrael, the, the intervening what, period was for, for Kapora for what they did. For yeah, for, to allow them to get another chance. Now, very interesting. What happens? Moshe Ben is sitting from morning till evening. He's judging the people, and Yisrael says, "You know, you're going to get worn out. You're going to get tired out." Usually, the Shver says, "You know, you're not working enough." Here, Yisrael says, "You know, you're working too much." Here, Yisrael says, "You're working too much." Right? You can never make them happy. Either it's not enough, or you're working too much. Not, uh, no, not, I'm good, but uh, <laughs> um, so it's very interesting. What did what did Yisrael uh, what did Yisrael tell Moshe? You'll tell them the road to go on, and the actions that you should do. Very interesting. Yisrael says, 
tell them the road to go on and the actions you should do. Says the Gemara Bab Metziah, what does this mean? The Tani Rav Yosef, you should tell them, this refers to a livelihood. I once heard Adam Gadol say, you see, you see from here, there's a mitzvah day right there to make a living. First to a livelihood. Okay. Es haderach. That's the shver talk. No. <laughs> That's the shver talk, right? Zu chasadim. This is gemilos chasadim. Asher yelchu zeh bikor chaylam. Ba zu kvura. So Yisroi comes to Moshe says, I want you to tell Klai so that four mitzvahs make a living. Do chesed, visit the sick, bury the dead. <coughs> now, very shver. There are a lot of mitzvahs in the Torah. Especially if Moshe is a Dayan, very unlikely he's donning Bikr Chaylam cases. <laughs> he, very unlikely he's donning Gemilus Chasadim cases. He's, the Yisra said, I want you to teach Klai Yisrael about four mitzvahs. What? Make a living, visit the sick, do chesed, bury the dead. Why don't you tell him? No tefillin, no tzitzis, no Shabbos, no say. yom. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right. So it, oh, Why is he so picking on these four mitzvahs? What, what is important for in his eyes? What is this? Chesed, this, this. I hear. Isn't Gemilus Chasadim encompassing? Some yes, Gemilus Chasadim does include uh, Bikur Chaylam and Kavura, but nevertheless, Gemilus Chasadim is even more inclusive than that. It includes specifically lending money to the poor. So it's an interesting thing that that Yisro should dafka focus on these four things. They so say, well, you know, Yisro didn't have the exp- this. This is something he was able to figure out on his own. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Very interesting. When Hashem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael on Vav Sivan, life changed. And that is, until the Torah was given, human beings were going to die. When Hashem gave the Torah to Klal Yisrael, they were supposed to live forever. Supposed to live forever. This is not like some kind of Kabbalistic idea. It's a Pasuk in Tehillim. It's a Gemara. What is the Chayin HaNachash was over. Forgiven. God. Tikkun. This was it. The Torah was given. It says in Tehillim, Ani Amarti Eloi Kimatem. I said, You are like gods. Uvnei Elyon Kochem. You are all supreme. It says the Gemara Nava Yisrael in number 8. The Tanya Rabbi Yossi Oymer. Loi Kiblu Yisrael Esa Torah. The only reason Klai Yisrael accepted the Torah, the main function was, Kedei Shalo Yehei Malach HaMavah Shoyleit Bahem. So that the Malach HaMavah should have no shlita over them. Shenema, like the Pasuk says, Ani Amarti Elohim Atem. I thought, I said you'll be like gods of Neel Yen Kochem. The only thing is, Chibaltem Maasechem. You ruined it. You ruined it. You served the Egel. And therefore, what's the verdict? Achein ka'adam tamusa. Now you have to die like Adam Arishain. But for a moment, for 40 days, when Klai Yisrael received the Torah, they were going to live forever. And when they served that golden calf, Achein ka'adam tamusa. Now everything changes. And you're going to fall like one of the, pr- the princes. In other words, you're not anymore B'nai Elyon. Now you're just a regular Tsar, and you're going to die. That's an amazing thing. When Kla Yisrael received the Torah, there was no Misa. Not only that, Rabbi said. Not only was there no Misa, there was not any deficiency in the world. Rashi brings down that Hashem came on Har Sinai, Le'ene kol ha'am ay, what about the guy who's blind like a bat? Says Rashi, Melami shal ha'yibahem suma. They were all uh, they were all healed. What about Moshe Rabbeinu? He was healed too. Moshe Rabbeinu was also healed. He was no longer kvad pes, as the matter in the beginning of Devarim. Eitz chayim arpe lashen. The matter says his his tongue was healed. So there were no blind people. There were no people who didn't die. Nobody needed to make a living. Well, where it said this written in Rosh? Where at the beginning? Ela Devarim. I, th- I believe it's the first matter on uh, Devarim. Marpe lasha eitz chayim. So there are no blind people. People wouldn't die. People didn't have to make a living. Sure. People didn't need chesed. People didn't need kvura. People didn't need um, bikur chaylem. Nobody got sick. No, no gemilas chasadim. No kvura. No need to make a living. In fact, very interesting mission in Perkei Avais. It says like this. There are ten miracles that happen in uh, the Beis HaMikdash every day. 
Right? Number one, Lahipila Isha Merech Basara Kaidesh, a woman didn't miscarry from the smell of the meat. The meat never spoiled. You look at the meat, it says, you know, best by January 10th. Ten years later, it's still good. Yeah? No dates on the meat. Filay <laughs> Nira Zavuv. Meat best by, no dates. So this is the Ochacha. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't explain yet. I didn't explain yet. I didn't explain yet. I'm just pointing. Okay? His Lay Yisriach Basar HaKodesh Me'olam. The meat didn't smell. Filay Nira Zavuv, Esam Zachayim. Right? There was not even a fly. You know, the flies come when they sense the, the rotting. No. So you're a carry with Kangam Yama Kippurim. If it's not rotting, so why is it going to be Zvuv? Some Zvuv are smart. They like good meat. They, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's no Zvuv. Okay. So the very interesting, there's a commentary on Perkyavis called the Chassid Yaivitz. Ah, yeah. Chassid Yaivitz is one of the classic commentaries. I had a Rebbe in Eretz Yisrael, who's now Rosh Shiva in Flyer, Rebbe Binyamin Luban. He was close with one of the Bali Musa, Rav Zaychik. And he once went to Rav Zaychik and he said, what sefer should you learn to get Yerah Shemayim? So he said, to learn the Svarim of the Chassid Yavitz. Chassid Yavitz Svarim are Mesugal for Yerah Shemayim. So uh, the Chassid Yavitz... First love is no good. It's also good. <laughs> We're learning Chassid Yavitz. i got to say something about the Chassid Yavitz, right? So uh, the Chassid Yavitz was one of the Gerushe uh, Svarad. In 1492, he was very close with the Abar Benel. And he was a very fierce uh, opponent to the philosophers, the Jewish philosophers. Anyway, he writes like this. What's the union and the Beis HaMikdash? Ten miracles happen every day. He says, before the sin of Adam Arishain, there was no deficiency in the world. Nothing rotted. There was no death. There was no chisarn in the world. Meat stayed fresh. There were no flies. There was no rikavon. There was no rotting. Before the sin of Adam Rishon, there was no deficiency. When Adam sinned, everything got ruined. Why? Why is it that before the Chayr of Adam Rishon, nothing got ruined, and after the Chayr, things got ruined? He says, God created the world that it should be subservient to Tyra. In other words, if someone connects himself to the Tyra, there's no Misa. There's no rotting, there's no aging, there's no deficiency. In the Beis HaMikdash, that the Shechina resided there. Why should any kilkul happen? Why, why should there be any deficiency? In other words, says the Chassid Yaivitz, the, the Beis HaMikdash is like the Makkah and Taira. The Beis HaMikdash is like the world before Adam Arishon sinned. So in the Beis HaMikdash... There's no aging. There's no deficiency. The meat is not going to rot. The, right, like the Mishnah says, a woman is not going to miscarry. There's not going to be any flies there. Flies and rotting, that's all, all a uh, phenomena c- caused by the Chet of Adam Arishon. But before Adam Arishon, the whole world is Meshubah to the Taira. So it's very interesting that what the Mishkan is, what's the Mishkan? The Mishkan is the world before the Taira is given. However the world was before excuse me, before the Chet of Adam Arishon. However the world was before the sin of Adam Arishon, that's what the Mishkan was like. Right? In other words, if you wanted to know how was life before Adam Arishon, go into the Mishkan. The Mishkan was like a little... Uh, um, katan. The, the Mishkan was a little clips of life before, before the Chet of Adam Arishon. But it was also in Mamad Arsinai. Ah, now why was the Mishkan... A little portrait of how life was before Adam Arishon. So says the Ramban, look at the Ramban number 12. The Mishkan, what's the secret of the Mishkan? Who Shayya of the Nistar. What the Mishkan is, is that we know by Yerid Hashem al Harsinai. So what happened after that? After Hashem came down on Harsinai, where did the Shekhinah go? It went to the Mishkan. The Mishkan was captured. For 40 years, the Mishon captured life on Har Sinai. It captured Hashem Shechina on Har Sinai. So in other words, basically what the Mishkan is, is even though when the Torah was given, what happened when the Torah was given? There was going to be no death. There's going to be no Kvura, no Bikracham, no sickness, no blindness, no need to make a living. Fine, we lost it, right? We lost it. With the Chedo Ego, we lost it. 
But there's one place in the world where that was captured, where there's no misa, where there's no rotting, where there's no deficiency. Where were we able to capture that? Mishkan. The Mishkan. In other words, the Mishkan is a little room, a little house, where we're able to capture what is life like before the Chet of Adam Rishon, what is life like when the Torah was given? For what? Why do you have to, to keep it? For what? In other, in other words, so we could see... How you see if you don't go in there and live there? We're, we're, we're reading about it, right? And those who went there saw. What was life like before Adam Rishon? Meat doesn't rot. There are no flies. There was uh, death. What? It was death. None of Avihu and any Kohen Gadol was the wrong. It was death. No, you say in the Mishkan. In the Mishkan. I hear, yeah. I hear. They died, they died. That was, uh, you know, Hira But in general, the way the natural order of life in the Mishkan was how life was like before the Chet of Adon Rishon. In other words, what the Chassid Yavitz is saying is that the Mishkan captured what happened on Harsinai. On Harsinai, Hashem gave us the Torah. Ani amarti elekim atem. That idea of Ani amarti elekim atem, which, uh, which occurred at Harsinai, was brought into the Mishkan. The Mishkan gave you a little glimpse of what life was going to be like when the Torah was given. We lost it. With the Chet Egel, it was gone. But if you went to the Mishkan, the Mishkan captured it. So how, how Yitro asked Moshe ah. to give the... Uh, so you ready for this? To give him this etza. Listen to this. If Beautiful. A... Says the Chafetz Chaim. This is in a footnote in the Sefer Avas Chaseh. Yisroi came when? What day of the year? After. The day after Yom Kippur. Now, Klai Yisrael had already gotten the Torah. They were supposed to live forever. And then what happened? Chetai. They served the Egal. So when they served the Egal, they were going to die. And they were going to become sick. And they needed to make a living. And they had to come on to Gemilas Chesed. But then Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai again. And he davened and Hashem should forgive them for the Egal. And what did Hashem say on Yom Kippur? Salat Yivrecha. So you may think now life reverts back to the way it was when Hashem gave the t- us the Torah. And you don't need Gmilas Chasadim. And you don't need Kvura. And you don't need Bikr Chaylam. And you don't need to make a living. Says Yisrael Moshe Rabbeinu, you should know that even though you just heard the two magic words, Salat Yivrecha, make sure you remind Klal Yisrael about four mitzvahs that are now Noigea. Don't think they're not Noigea anymore. 80 days ago, they weren't in Agea. 80 days ago, there's no such thing as Bikr Chalim. No one got sick. 80 days ago, nobody died. 80 days ago, nobody had to go make a living. But now, Yisra is saying, just because you heard Salach de Kedvarecha, but now, because of the Chet Ha'egel, it's Ani Amarti Yakin Adam, but Uvnei Alem, Achein Ka'adam Tamusan. Achein Ka'adam Tamusan has not been removed. That's how the Chavetz Chaim explains what Yisra was telling Moshe Rabbein. Look at number 13. He doesn't say when it all came. Vahimi Machras. So is it? Doesn't say when he came. So is the Raya of it? What he said. No. Vayimi Machras. Vayeshem Moshe Lish Berasam. And Yisro says, you know, you're going to wear out. But how do we do we know that he just the same day he came? Maybe he came before Matan. So that's the Raya no, that he, he came. He may have come before Matan, oh, no, but he didn't. Moshe wasn't judging the people. Okay, so this was the day that he told him that. Yeah, because the pasuk Vahidata Lohem yeah. is after Vayimi Machras. Okay. So look, look at number thirteen. Vuhu Yadu at as well. Known, the kaidemat and Taira before the Torah was given. Kara Hashem Yisbarach Lamal Chamaves. Hashem calls the Mal Chamaves. The Amar Lai says, "Look, you're out. You're off. You're on vacation. You're out of a job, right?" Af al pishem yisicha al kabayim. What the Rambam says, you know what? Yeah, I have to cut your hours. Now you only deal with the umay sa'elam. For what? Now you know. Sorry, I'll, same plan, no, Hashem said, same pay, same insurance plan, right? You still get dental, but, but, you have less hours. You don't, you don't have to deal with Klai Yisrael. He says, Aval uma tisha, you don't rule over Klai Yisrael. Aval acher kach, shechatu ba'egel, but afterwards, when Klai Yisrael sinned with the Egel, af shesach Hashem zrach aleikar achet, even though Hashem forgave them for the Iker chet, kamay shekasov, vayinochem Hashem, we lost it. We lost the taiva that we wouldn't die. Says the Chafetz Chaim. Now look. And this is what it says. Because of the Mikra Shlifanenu. How this whole Indian that we were going to live forever and we lost it is alluded to in the, the Pasuk we mentioned. First it's written, Vayihimi Machras. By Yeshev Moshe, it says it was the next day Moshe was sitting. Vamru Chazal, to whom Imachas Yom Kippurim. Chazal say this was the day after Yom Kippur. Vihinei Yodua, we know to be Yom Kippurim. Yar and Moshe Ben Meir Sinai. 
Moshe Rabbeinu comes down from Har Sinan Yom Kippur Bibesar Meis Hashem Shanim Chalam Achet. So they get the report. Klai so here is that's it. Chayro Ego is gone. Kedisa Pekzer of Lazar. Biafal Pikein Roi Roi Inu. But nevertheless, we see the Lai Nim Chal Achet Legamri. The sin was not forgiven completely. Sheisbato Misa Meisol Vezel Shamar Yisrael Moshe Bahaydato Lohem Es Haderech. You got to teach them the road. Haynu. Even though when they receive the Torah, at the time they got the Torah, Moshe didn't have to tell them about Kvura. It's, it's you know, who needs to know about Kvura? Who cares? It's not, it's not Negea. It's like, you know, it's like Hilchas it's not, Mashicha. It's not, it's not relevant. Well, Kvura. Well, who are you burying? Bikr Chaylam. What's Bikr Chaylam? He says, there were no poor people. Like Rashi says, there are no blind people, no poor people. Kamesh Yipesh Rashi. Ki nasu cheirus mikoyo. They became free of everything, right? What's this referring to? The mission of Perkeyov is Perk Vav, mission of Beis. What does the mission say? Behaluchois, Masei, Elohim Hema. Beha Michtav, Michtav, Elohim Hu, Charos, Ala Luchois, Al Tikri Charos, Ala Cheros. Ein lecha ben chayren el ami sheloisik b'tam What does it mean? Ein lecha ben chayren. You're not free. Who are you free from? Free from the malacham avas. When somebody learns tayra, he's free from the malacham avas. That's what it was supposed to be. The ata shenim chalam chedo egel. So Yisro says to Moshe, now just because you heard the two words halach the kedorecha la yashivu kinim chalagamri. Mm. Don't think you're completely forgiven. Tell them the road you should go on. That's a remez to burial, right? What's the derech? It's the road that everyone's traveling on, right? Like it says, or it says in Perkei Avais, where is a person going? Everyone's going. There's one road. Everyone's but, traveling uh, on. In the Gemara said there was a Gemara Chasadim. Yeah. No. As a Asher Yelchu. Asher Yelchu is a. Derech is Gemara Chasadim. Says Rabbi Yosef in the Gemara. In other words, it's a progression. Haderech Yelchu Ba. The road is. The road starts like this. It starts. You need Gemara Chasadim. A little further on, you need the Bikur Chaylim. And when you get to the end of the road, it's Ba. Kavura. That's a right. The Hakavana, Shahaderach, Hayadua, the well-known road. Asher Kaladam Yelchuba that everyone's going on. Vuha Kavura, Tezarze Malzeh. Yisroel tells Moshe, you have to remind them, you have to encourage them. B'Saidiyam Ben Yitzah. In other words, Yisroel says, make sure you tell them now about a halacha that has first become the Gaya. Right until now, there is no such thing as Gmiyos Chasa. There is no, there is no Kavura. There is no Bikur Chaylem. There is no making a living. But now, just because you got kapara for the chedo egel, you're not in a skapar lagamri. Okay. So Abay Sai, so far very beautiful, but it doesn't have anything to do with us, right? Because the ma'isa, we weren't forgiven for the chedo egel, and like the Rebbeinu Shalom says, achen ka'adam tamosan. So now we're in the. Unfortunately, we live in a time when there is misa. And there's Bikr Chaylem, mm-hmm. and there's Gemilas Chasadim, and there's Beis Chayem, and these are human needs. We all need all these things. So, and fine, in the Mishkan, we were able to capture how life was when the Torah was given before Matan Torah. Does it have anything to do with us today? So we're going to see that even though Hashem said that even though you're forgotten, forgiven for the Egel, all these things still apply. But a little bit of being cheikh, of being free from Malach HaMavas and from Bikr Chaylem and from Beis Chayehem and from Kvura, a little bit is still possible today. If a person is Makabal on himself, oil Tyra, so even though you're not going to live forever and you're not going to be exempt from uh, a living and you're not going to be exempt from Chayli and you're not exempt from all the vicissitudes of life, but a little bit, you could sort of remove yourself from it. You could make it that even though every person has vicissitudes in life, but it won't be as much of an oil as it would be otherwise. In other words, what we're going to learn is that the same way when Hashem gave the Torah to Klai Yisrael, we were completely free from all of these things. So even though because of the Chedo Ego we lost it, 
We didn't lose it legamri. We didn't completely lose it. In other words, there's a way, even today, to sort of, the same way the, the Mishkan captured 100% how life was like before, before the Chet of Adam Arishon and when the Torah was given, today we could capture a little taste of it. How? So it says the Mishkan Perkei Avais, the Mishkan says like this, Anyone who accepts upon himself the yoke of Tyra, they will remove from you the yoke of the government and the yoke of the normal vicissitudes of life. Anyone who casts off the yoke of Tyra, in other words, in this world, you have to have an oil. Everyone has a yoke. Everyone has a burden. Now the question is, which one do you want? Do you want al Tyra? Or do you want al Malchus al Darchas? So what does it mean, al Malchus al Darchas? Al Malchus is, you know, everybody has to pay their taxes and everyone has certain responsibilities. But some people, it becomes like a burden, an unbearable burden. It overwhelms them. It takes up their entire lives. Everybody has to make a living. But some people, it's so all-consuming that they can't breathe. They can't breathe. Mm. So, what's the Mishnah saying? If you're makabel on yourself, the oil taira, Hashem makes it the, that the other burdens are not a burden. Why? Look at the Rambam. The Rambam says, Amar, what the Mishnah is saying, look at number 15, Ki b'schar lakchay oil taira, as a reward for taking the yoke of taira, Yatzileyu Hashem Yisbarach, Hashem will save him, B'yakel me olav taira chazman, and he'll make less the, the difficulties of life. Now, the Ram is not saying that it will be gone. It's not like life in the Mishkan. It's not, yeah, like, uh, it's not like when Ani uh, Amarti Alekim Atem, but he'll take away a little bit. He'll make it less. Why? Says the Ramam, next line, the last word, V'amru, Charos al haluchais. You'll be free from the vicissitudes of time. Someone who accepts and acts based on what it says in the Luchais, he will achieve Cheros. Is that a cash on the Rama? What do you mean he'll achieve Cheros? But the Gemara says that Achein Ka'adam to Muslim. The Gemara says we lost it. Yeah. Cheros ala Luchais, Cheros, that's when the Torah was given. But unfortunately, we serve the Ega, and now life's as miserable as it was before the Torah was given. No, it's not. Now that the Torah was given, yeah, we sing with the Ega, and there's Misa, and there's Kura, and there's Rekha Chalim, and there's Beis Chayeyem, but if somebody dedicates himself to the yoke of Taira, doesn't mean somebody has to sit and cuddle and learn all day, but dedicate himself, Kafi Yechaltai, according to their ability, Hashem says, oh, you take upon yourself yoke of, the yoke of Torah, you are charos, you're charos, you're free. I'll make the inyan of parnasa not such an oil. I'll make the inyan of chayli not such an oil. I'll make it, you know, that the need for gemilas chasam and other people won't be as over, over uh, bearing. In other words, even today, that's what I'm saying, right? The Ramam lived after the chayro egal, I believe, right? Mm. Right? The Ramam lived after the Chayr Aiga. So what's the Ramam saying? The Ramam saying, someone who's Makabal Al Taira, he is Chayrus? What's, what's a Chayrus? There's still Misa, there's still Bikur Chayrus. No. The oil of it, the, the Hashem will remove the bite, the burden. It won't sting as much. You could rise above it just a little bit. You could come a little bit Lamalam and Ateva. In other words, when the Torah was given Mamish, you're completely Lamalam and Ateva. There's no Misa. There's no kvura, there's no gemilas chasadim. But even today, you could, by accepting upon oneself the yoke of Taira, you're able to rise just a little bit l'mala menateva. Look at number 16, and this is what the Maral says. Take a look at the underlying part. Maral says, he cites the Gemara that we quote in Abu Dezara, that Kla Yisrael only received the Taira to be beyond the Malach HaMavis. So the question is, if that's the only reason we accepted the Taira, and nowadays the Malach HaMavis does have control over us, so then maybe we should give the Torah back. Or what did we achieve? Yeah, we, we didn't achieve anything, right? If the whole reason we accept the Torah is so we should live forever, and now we don't live forever, so maybe we should hand the Torah back? No. It means Hashem gave us the Torah to be able to live a little bit. And if a person is Makabel the Torah, look what the, the Maral says, 
by the underlying part, Amar Khan, Shema'avirin mimenu o malchus v'o darcheras. Ki afalgav she'i efshar la'adam b'loi parnasa. It's impossible not to have any parnasa. V'tzarchu l'malacha. You have to have malacha k'tei she'asik v'tara. Mikamaka imenu lav oil darcheras. It won't be such an oil. Ki parnasa se magasli b'kalos. The parnasa will come a little easier. Asher mekabal olav ol tara. Why? Because when you're mekabal the ol tara, you're a little bit l'mala minateva. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. Doesn't mean you don't have to take care of yourself, uh, health-wise, or for the needs, for any physical needs. In other words, you don't all of a sudden become a malach, but a little bit, a little bit you could tap into the way life was like at the time of the giving of the time. What is ol tara? Oh, what is ol? Oil? Bird. I'll tell you, is when, uh, you know, when the alarm goes off in the morning. Today, maybe not. No, it's, it's a responsibility. It's an achrayas. It's something that, that you bear. It's, uh, right? What is it? Ta- what the Torah says, mitzvahs lav lahanis nitnu. Right? Mitzvahs were not given for pleasure. Rashi says, so what were they given for? They were given to be a responsibility. Responsibility. But a mother who has responsibility of taking care of children, she's very happy with that responsibility. She's, she's fortunate to have that responsibility. So it's a responsibility that's an achrayas, but, but it's something that we're, we're very fortunate to have. Okay. What? Yeah. It's not the respect or In this case, uh, the maral translates it as derecharetz uh, as parnasa. But what is bet chayim? A livelihood. Malacha, parnasa. How we refer to Parnassah, Bet Chayim? That's how they live. Ah, you know, Chayim. That's how, yeah, that's how they pay for their food. Beis Chayim. So according to that, according to this Gemara, it comes out, Beis Chayim is a mitzvah day Yeah. Okay. Okay. Melamed oto melacha nekiyah. Ma? Is few three mitzvot that the father have to do to his son. Torah, melacha nekiyah, and... Yeah, yeah. Five, right? Five, yeah. Okay. Look at no, number 17. So we come to something amazing. Maybe you remember we once spoke this out. So the Pasuk says in Parshish Yisrael, this week, Vayoytzei Moshe as ha'am likras ha'alekim. Moshe took the nation out towards God. What does Rashi say over there? What do you mean likras ha'alekim? Kechasan ha'yoytzei likras ka'ala. Min ha'machene. Vayisyatzvu, they stood besach disahar. On the bottom of the mountain. So Kaiso stood on the bottom of the mountain. We all know what that means. Kaf aleim har. Then the next pasuk says vehar Sinai ashan kula. Har Sinai was completely full of smoke. So Baatum is bothered by a bomb of Akasha. Right? We know there's something called a pronoun. Right? But you first have to use the noun, and then you use the pronoun. In other words, I say like this. He's in the kailo today. Shlomo walked here. Well, who is the he? First, I should say, Shlomo's in the Kailo today. He walked here. First, you want to say the noun, and then you could say he. First, you say the name, then you say he. So it should say like this: Vayisyatzvu b'sachtes Har Sinai v'hahar Ashan Kulai. The pasuk doesn't make any sense. It says they stood on the bottom of the mountain. They stood on the bottom of the mountain, and Har Sinai was completely full of smoke. That's not how you talk. It should say. For, you don't use a pronoun before you say the, 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 the definitive noun. It should say, they stood by Yisyatsu Batachtas Har Sinai, they stood the mountain of Sinai, and after you identify Har Sinai, we should say, and the mountain. On S of the right? Torah said the But here it's just the opposite. Refer back to it. Right, here you have to refer back to it. It should say, they stood on the bottom of Har Sinai, and the mountain is completely full of smoke. Listen to what the Baal term says. Besachtas Har, Behar Sinai. Melamed shenit la shahar. We learn from here that a mountain was uprooted. Memakaymai, venase kehar al gabehar, and it became a mountain on top of a mountain. Very mysterious. Baal Turim seems to be saying, by Yisyatsu besach the sahar, they stood under the mountain. It's a different mountain than Har Sinai. And then the Har Sinai Yashan Kulei. In other words, Baal Turim is saying, if you want to picture Klal Yisrael under Har Sinai, it's not. They're under this mountain that's about to fall. No. You know what happened? I don't understand by the There you go. There were two mountains on top of them. What? How? There were two different mountains. One is they stood under Hahar, which wasn't Har Sinai. 
And by the way, Har Sinai was Ashan Kulai. On, the, on that mountain. On that mountain. So in the top was Har Sinai. The, uh, there was something yeah. called Hahar, and then there's something called Har Sinai. That's what the Baal term says. Sachtis Hahar, the Har Sinai, Melame Shenit Lashahar, Mimakam. We see the mountain was uprooted. Benasa Kehar Al Gabehar. There was a mountain on top of a mountain. So what's going on? There are two mountains? What's the purpose? That's not Nitlash. Nitlash went out uprooted. of the place. Well, what's, what's the Baal term saying? He's saying there are two mountains at Har Sinai. Right? Har Al Gabehar. What are the two mountains? <coughs> So there's a very interesting sefer called Yalkut Ruveni. Yalkut Ruveni, Rabbi Avram Ruven Katz, who lived in uh, Prague in the 1600s. His father was the son-in-law of the Kliyaka, Raphael Lunchitz. And uh, Yalkut Ruveni collected on the Parshiyas different Kabbalistic Midrashim. And listen to what he says. Look at number 19. Bishas Kabbalas HaTayra Nekar Har HaMoyriah Hara Maria was uprooted at the time of Kabbalah Satira. Uval the Midbar. It came to the Midbar. Kedei Shetinasen HaTayra. Amakrem HaMaula Hazeh. So the Tayra should be given on Hara Maria. Oh, I never heard that. I never heard that. <laughs> never heard that. That's what the Pasuk means. By Yisyatsu Betachtis Hahar. Hara Maria. Vehar Sinai Oshan Kulai. Two different mountains. Yeah? And how do we learn that one was on top of the other? Well, if they were under Har, Har Maria, and we know Har Sinai was Kaf Alim Har Kagigis, so okay. then these are under both of them, right? But that, oh, the, that's how, that's what the Baal Turah means, and that's how there's the simple meaning of the Pesukim. By Yisyatsu Besachtis, what? Hahar? They're under the mountain, oh, yeah. Har Maria. And by the way, don't forget about Har Sinai. For Har Sinai, Yashan Kulai. That's Pshat. Okay, so according to the, uh, the Buddha, who was the, the top mountain? Moria or Sinai? Sinai. But it said of here, Nitna Torah la ala Ramule. Both of them. Given them both. both. How bold? Klaus was underneath, and on top of them was Har Maria and Har Sinai, and Hashem was on top of everything. It doesn't have to say exactly one on top of the other. It can be that they, they were a bit They're both. Hard. Uh, and the Haramoya came on them, and the Arsinai was there. Uh, oh, but it said Kahar al Gabe Har. Exactly the formation you had to be there. But what we're learning is <laughs> that Haramoya. No, because the Torah said before Hashem al Arsinai. Yeah, but it also says that it was Sach the Sahar, and Har Hahar is not Arsinai. So probably Haramoya is under Arsinai, because the Torah said Arsinai. Both, they're both there. They're both there. That's how, he, that's, that's how he's reading the Pesukim. No, okay, because but the question is on which, which one? The, the Torah was giving. That's the question. It could be that the Torah was on top of both. The Torah was on top of both. Right? Here, you have Har Sinai, you have Har Maria, and the Torah was on top of it. Anyway, that could be what Rabbi Huda Levi means in the Zimra. Di ber bakachai baharavar. Hashem gave the Torah haramar. Where did he get it from? Yaakov Ruveni. Balaturim. Pasuk in the Swiss parasha. Okay. What? Oh, now Yaakov Ruveni was after. Yeah. Rabbi Huda Levi had this tradition. No, okay. but we say haramar also because on the shvuz, we, we, why we put uh, flowers in the shuls? Because there was a lot of flowers on the mountain. But we don't find necessarily that Har Sinai is called Har, Har Hamor. The Gemara Masech the Tainis. No, because of the flower, the flower that was in that day. No, but so the, why we put look flowers at the in the shul? The Gemara in Tainis says, why we put flowers in the shul? Yeah. Moshe Rabbeinu was born on what day? Zayin Be'adar. Zayin, he was born on Zayin Adar. So after three months, his mother put him where? Where? In the Yamsuf. What was in the Yamsuf? Grass. Yeah. So as Rav Benet, that's why you put grass in the shul on Ashvus, because the grass protected Moshe Rabbeinu on the day he was supposed to give the Torah, on Vav Sivan. I have a question for you. Yeah. In Kutsch Reuveni, it yeah. says, Bish'ad Kabbalat Torah Nika Hara Moriah, Uvali yeah. Midbar, Kedesh Tinatena Torah Al Makom HaMe'ule Hazeh. HaMe'ule Hazeh, it means... Makamullah is there also. Uh, also. Well, he's not. That's a chumash. That's what I saw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rabbi Yisai. Rabbi Yisai is very interesting. Rabbi Yisai is very interesting. What's the reason why that in the Torah, in Muktam and Mokhar Batayra? Why is there no order in the Torah? I mean, if you write a book, the first thing you need to do is you have to make sure it's in a chronological order. Why, why would you put it out of order. I mean, Hashem could certainly write 
the order of the, the Torah in order. Why would it be out of order? And especially the episode that's right in front of Kabbalah Satira, that right immediately preceding Kabbalah Satira, it's out of order. <laughs> Why is the story that immediately precedes Kabbalah Satira out of order? You change the, the so order. very interesting. Rav Gifter writes in uh, Perkei Amuna, in, in the Shirei Das, he says like this. He says, if you approach Tyra as just some kind of intellectual discipline, it's going to be very confusing to you. You have one Pasuk here, one Pasuk there. They contradict each other. How are you going to understand it? You have, here the Torah says Mutter, here the Torah says Asr, Shanis is Asr, Tzitzis is Mutter. How do you reconcile it? This whole story is out of order, that story is out of order. If you pray, approach the Torah like an intellectual discipline, you're not going to get anywhere. Hashem purposely has the Torah in not a chronological order. So we realize the Torah is not a natural body of wisdom. It's Lamala Minateva. It's above time. It's above nature. It's not governed by the laws of nature. So perhaps that could be the reason why. Right before the giving of the Torah, what's the Limud? Yisrael comes. But what do you mean? Yisrael didn't come yet. No, no, no. You have to understand. You want to get the Torah. The first thing you have to understand is, this is not a history book that's being taught in chronological order. This is something that's lamala min azman, lamala min ateva, and that's the reason why if you're makabel the Torah, if you're makabel the Torah, then ani amarti alikim atem. You're not, you're above and beyond the Malach HaMalas. You're above and beyond Beis Chayim. You're above and beyond Gemilas Chasam. You're above and beyond Bikr Chaylam. The Iker Limud before Kabbalah Satayra is Ein Muktam Amulcha Batayra. This is not something that's governed by the laws of nature. And even though we said we lost it, and Hashem said, Achin Kadun to Muson, and we are subject to Malach HaMalas and Beis Chayim and Gemilas Chasam, but a little bit. Like the Rambam says, Kol HaMakabel Al Toira, Ma'avirin Meno Al Machzor Dechetz. Why? Because Charos al is still applies today. It still applies today. And that's the reason why. Lamaisa, La'asad Lavai. During the time of Tchias HaMesim, what is Hashem going to use to be Mechaye Mesim? Tal. The do, the Tal. What Tal? The Tal Torah. Someone who learned Torah could have Tchias HaMesim. Someone who never learned Torah, they could be a good person. And they could have a good Jewish heart. If someone didn't learn Torah, there's no Tchias HaMesim. And if someone learned Torah, there is Tchias HaMesim. Why? Because Torah, even though we don't have it today, even though Hashem said, Achein Ka'adam Tamusun, the Torah still has that capacity of Ani Amarti Aleikim Atem. It still has the capacity to be Charus Mimal Hamavas. And that's why La'asid Lavai, where the world will revert back to the state where Hashem gave the Torah of Ani Amarti Aleikim Atem. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.